going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here, welcome back to another PS4 tutorial. So in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to use FTP on your PS4 to transfer files from your computer to your PS4's hard drive remotely over your network connection. It's much faster and more convenient than using a USB stick. Um, plus, you know, there's not really any other applications that can browse your, um, your, your PS4's hard drive other than some sort of homebrew test applications. So. Um, FTP is kind of like the main way to access your hard drive, but I'm also going to show you where to find certain things on your hard drive, um, some useful locations and kind of stuff that you can do with FTP as well. So, okay, so the first thing you have to do is go ahead and run the FTP payload from the web kit. So we're going to head into our exploit page. We're going to go to 5.05 .05, and that you can follow this if you're still on 4.05 or 4.55 because the process is exactly the same. You would just go into 4.55 and run FTP. Um, so I'm going to do 5.05 .05 FTP, and that's going to run the payload. Now, when the payload runs, you'll get a notification with your IP address. So it'll say "Welcome to FTP," and then the second notification says, "There's your IP." So note down that IP address: 192.168.1.115 for me. That's my PS4's IP. And you can just sort of stay in this page. You can press the middle button to X out into the home screen or you can just leave it here. And from that point, we're gonna go over to our computer and we're gonna run a FTP client. So I recommend just using FileZilla. Let's make this a bit smaller. So on the left, you'll have your file system of your computer. On the right, you'll have whatever server you're connecting to. In this case, it will be our PS4. So we're gonna enter our IP address, our PS4's IP. 1.115 into the host. We don't need to enter a username or password and we're just going to put the port number as 1337 and then quick connect and that will connect us to our PS4's hard drive. So there we go. We have access to our PS4's hard drive right here. Okay, so the first folder we have down here is the user folder. If we go in there and go to the top folder, add content, and then you've got some another folder in here and then all your themes show up in here, including the package file for your theme. So if you have any custom themes, um, maybe you've deleted them off your computer and you want to edit a theme, then you can go ahead and extract the package file and you will be able to extract the actual package file if it's a fake package file, um, as so long as you, you know, used all zeros as the password for the package file or something like that, or a password you remember, you'll be able to extract them. Um, then you've got the app folder. Now this actually contains all your game package files as well. Um, so obviously any retail games you won't be able to extract the package files but for any fake package games then you, you've got the actual game package file right here that you can just extract to your computer and then extract the, the raw files if you need to so that's pretty useful as well and then you've also got app meta now in here you'll find your home screen images so you can actually change out the home screen images for example I've already done it for the um, for the playroom so I've changed the icon to my YouTube icon and that it's all just a PNG 512 pixels by 512 pixels so you just have to you know make a PNG file with the same dimensions call it icon 0.png and then overwrite the one um, that's originally in there and then when you reboot your PS4 your home screen image will have changed. You can also do the same for the background images as well which is uh, pick 0.png is the background image or the loading image. When you start an application, you get the loading screen pops up for it. That's the image right there. You can go ahead and swap that out. That's just a, a 1080p image. So 1920 by 1080. Just recreate the same thing with the same file name and you can replace it and it will change uh, the loading screen image. So that's another thing you can do in there. So another thing is your save games as well is also in the user folder. So if you go to um, user and then you go to home and then this folder right here now your folders might be named slightly different like stuff like this but it'll be in the same location essentially so we go in here and we go to save data and then obviously these represent all the titles of all your different games so I think 7326 I think that's Horizon Zero Dawn so I, yeah, there it is. So I've got all my auto saves for Horizon Zero Dawn, my quick saves. So if I wanted to, I could just copy this entire folder, you know, to my computer 
and then I have a backup of all my save data for that game. Or if I want to back up all my saves, I could just uh, make a, you know, drag this whole folder to my computer and I have a backup of all my saves for all my games, which is definitely useful for someone with a jailbreak when you're running payloads, you know, um, if you ever get some kind of corruption and you have to like reset your hard drive, at least you have a backup of all your save data. And I know there's a payload that does this for you, but I'm just showing you where the location is because that's essentially what that payload does. It just takes the save data folder and dumps it to a USB. Although with FTP, you could just copy it straight to your computer. So that's another thing right there. Let's see, do we have anything else in the user thing that's useful? Now, this is just some stuff that I've come across. There's, as you can see, there's loads and loads of folders. So if, if there's some other useful thing I don't mention in here, which there probably will be, there, there might be several, uh, then let me know in the comments or let other people know in the comments uh, where some other cool stuff is on your hard drive. Um, some useful things. So a cool little trick you can do again with something in the user folder is with your trophies. So if you go into home and then this folder here, and then you go into trophy, data, SCE, SCE underscore TROP, and then you'll have trophy summary dot dat. So if you extract that to your desktop, you can actually edit this. So this is just the summary that shows up on your profile of how many trophies you have. Now this doesn't stick, but you know, if you want to take a cool little screenshot and post it, uh, as if you have like, you know, hacked your trophies, then you can basically do that. So I can set all these to 1337 and then save. Oops, not save as, just save. So I can save that, overwrite the original. And then if I go back onto my um, PS4 and I look at my profile, yeah, there you go. You can see my trophies are all 1337, 1337. Um, so yeah, cool little thing you can do if you want to show people that you've like hacked your trophies. It's not real though. Um, they, they will reset when you when you uh, reboot your console, I'm pretty sure. But uh, it's a nice little trick you can do. So moving up from user, we have update. So there's, not, there's nothing in USB, but if you go up to update, there's a few interesting things in here. So, so in here, I've basically got an update blocker installed, which are these two folders. That's all the update blocker is, is just these two folders. So if you haven't got the update blocker installed, then you won't have those two folders. You'll just have this. Another interesting thing is if you have an update that's pending. So if you have an update, so when you switch your PS4 on, it says there's an update available. Um, you've already downloaded the update. It's just waiting to be installed then the update file will be in here. So you'll have this ps4update.pup and all you have to do is delete it. And then when you reboot your PS4, the update that's waiting to be installed will be gone. So that's one cool thing you can do. And then if you want to block the updates, then you just create a folder with the, the name of the update, which is ps4update.pup, but you create a directory with that name. And then that way, I think you also have to create this other folder as well, ps4update.pup.net.temp, just to be extra sure. So yeah, basically what that means is when the PS4 tries to download the update to this location, it can't because there's a folder with the same name and it can't overwrite it because it's a folder, not a file, um, and therefore it will just fail. So that's basically all the updater is, it's just those two folders. Uh, the update blocker, I mean, is just those two folders. So you can do that manually. Um, so let's move on. So what else do we have? There's a few other things actually. So, so another thing you can do is get your system images from system underscore EX and then app. And then in here you have all your system images. So for example, if I open this one up here, icon zero, that's probably our, our web browser icon. Yes, it is. So that's how you get your system uh, icons. So if you're wanting to make your own custom theme and you want the original icons so that you can, you know, edit them in Photoshop to make them fit your theme, then that's where you get them from, just this folder. Um, the, the one that says 4K isn't actually 4K, it's just, it's just a slightly higher resolution image so that it doesn't look as blurry on people who have four screen displays, uh, 4K screen displays. So yeah, you can get them from there. So all your system images will be in these folders here. So it's useful for creating custom themes. 
and also MNT, so this is another big one. So in here is all of your external devices. So if you have a USB stick plugged in, then your data will be in you know, either USB 0 or USB 1. Uh, your disc, if you have a disc inserted, I have uh, The Last of Us uh, game disc inserted, so it'll be in here. So if I go to app, there's the package file that's actually on the disc. So you can find that in there. If you run the game, the raw folders will be loaded into the sandbox directory. So you can get all the extracted files from the package file uh, inside the sandbox directory. So I'll actually run the game and show you. Hopefully it'll work. Hopefully I'll still be able to access FT. Oh, I still have access. Perfect. Okay, so MNT, sandbox. Uh, it's not... Oh, no, there we go. I refreshed, so we're good. So because I've loaded the actual disk, I'm actually running the game now. Um, you'll see this PFS MNT folder. Inside there, you'll have app zero, and these are all your raw files for the game. So your eboot.bin's in there. You know, here's all the actual main game files. You'll find them all in there. Movies, all your cutscenes, your sound files, everything's in there. But it's not decrypted, obviously, so it's not the same as, um, you know, unless it's unless it's a fake package game. So if you're running a fake package game, then it will be decrypted and you can extract those files and modify them if you want. Create another package file out of them. Uh, also, if you have a game update installed, I believe you'll also have a, a dash patch. So you'll have, this is dash app zero, but if you have a game update installed, you'll have patch zero. So you'll have a folder like this that's just dash and then app, then patch zero. And then that will contain all your update files for whatever update you have installed for that game. Um, and then normally this folder here contains a combination of uh, the game plus the patched files. Uh, so the fully patched game essentially. So that's pretty cool. So you've got some stuff in there. And coming near to the end now of, of things I wanted to show that you could do. Um, pretty much the final thing. Yeah, so the final thing is your avatar picture your um your profile picture so as you can see on um, for me i've got my my again my youtube avatar as my profile picture so in order to do that basically you want to go into system underscore data priv and then cache profile this folder here um you might have two folders i think like if you have multiple profiles you'll have different folders um, and then right in here, now if you don't have an image in here already, if you don't have a profile picture, you won't have any of these image files. But basically all you want to do is create these image files. So just to show you if I extract them here. So here they all are. So what you want is one PNG file that is 440 pixels by 440. And then you want DDS files. Now I just made them dxt1 in paint.net um, you can use photoshop or something else but basically you want to create a 64 pixel version you want to create a 128 pixel version a 260 pixel version and a 440 pixel version all in dds format so direct draw surface i think um, and yeah you want to make sure there are those dimensions and then you also want one which is a png which is 440 so once you create that, you can just go ahead, copy them into this folder, and then when you reboot your PS4, the image will show up as your profile picture. So yeah, that's just a bunch of useful things, so use some useful things that you can find on your hard PS4's hard drive with FTP. And obviously, of course, there's probably a lot of other stuff, um, other useful things in here. This is just sort of, you know, what I could come up with um, of what you can find that's useful on your PS4's hard drive with FTP, but I'm sure people will have, um, you know, other other areas that contain useful stuff. So if you know anything, go ahead and leave that in the comments section so other people can find out. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.